안녕하세요. 과학 분야 인싸들을 만나보는 인싸랑입니다. 오늘 저희가 온곳 제주도입니다. 오! 바다 보이시나요? 오늘 이곳 제주도에서 저희가 만나볼 분은 물리학자 리사랜들 선생님입니다. 리사랜들 선생님은 우주가 3차원이 아니라 그 이상의 여분 차원으로 이루어져 있다는 랜들 선드럼 모델을 발표하시면서 전 세계 물리학자들의 많은 주목을 받았죠. 미국 하버드대학교에서 이론 물리학자로 중심교수직을 얻은 첫 번째 여자 교수님 지금까지 딱 3명밖에 받지 못한 노벨 물리학상의 수상후보로 매년 거론되는 리사 랜들 선생님을 만나서 이야기를 들어보도록 하겠습니다 네, 교수님 일단 저희 인싸랑 구독자분들께 인사 한 말씀 부탁드리겠습니다 I'm very happy to be here today um, It's so nice to turn into an audience that is interested in learning more about science. So I look forward to talking to you and telling your audience more about the kinds of things that I work on and I think are important. And I hope they will learn more and enjoy it. 이론 물리학이라는 연구를 하고 계신데 좀 일반 대중분들은 생소할 것 같아요. 이론 물리학이 뭔가요? Theoretical physics is predicting what we see in nature and trying to understand and predict what we see in nature. So physicists can be divided roughly into people who do experiments, people who go out and try to look for new laws or test laws. But theoretical physics is trying to put together what people have observed, trying to understand the underlying principles. What is it that makes up the universe? What are the laws? And to also find ways to test those ideas to see whether they are correct. Um, I didn't know I would study theoretical physics at all when I was young. Uh, I didn't know people who were scientists. I didn't realize it was something you could do. I thought I would be a lawyer when I was younger. So only when I went to high school did I take my first physics course. And then when I went to college, I majored in physics. Um, but I didn't even know for sure I would do that. But once you start doing it, then you think you'll do it for a while. And I like solving problems. And I like, I like the idea that um, to do something that would last, even though We now find out ideas change, obviously, over time. But I want to do something where you understand the world better, and that I enjoyed solving puzzles. I didn't know for sure that's what I would do, but I thought I would try it and see, and I worked very hard, and I enjoyed it. So, and I really do like solving problems, and I do like resolving inconsistencies when things don't make sense. I like things to make sense. So, um, so I worked on a wide variety of problems, but then, At some point, I realized it's really what I like to do. 그 중에서도 이제 선생님께서 랜들 선드럼 모델을 발표를 하시면서 전 세계 물리학자들의 많은 주목을 받으셨는데 모델을 이해하기 위해 필요한 개념을 좀 먼저 여쭤보고 싶은데요. 여분 차원이 뭐라고 좀 설명을 해주실 수 있을까요? Yes, it's very difficult for many people to think about what an extra dimension is, but Let's first think about what we mean by saying three spatial dimensions. So we think there are three spatial dimensions and there are different directions we can go. But you can think of it as the number of coordinates you need to give to specify where something is located. So you might say latitude, longitude, and altitude. Suppose, now I know you don't see it, but suppose there was another coordinate you had to give, some other direction. Clearly it's not one that we see, or else we would think it was there. But there could be something that's hidden, another coordinate that tells you just another direction in space. And maybe that really exists. Maybe there really is another dimension of space and that we have to be more clever about figuring out if that exists. <laughs> 그래서 Gravity could be very, very weak. Or if you think about the field, um, the particle that communicates gravity called the graviton, it's like a photon, which is a particle that communicates light. 
except it communicates gravity. And that particle is heavily concentrated in some regions and not as heavily concentrated in others. So it's a very natural explanation for why gravity can seem to be so weak. This might not sound like a big problem to you, but it is for particle physicists, it is a very important problem that has been driving the field called the hierarchy problem. 지금 마지막에 그 하이어키 프로블럼 말씀하셨는데 그게 왜 중력이 약한 게왜이 계층 이 프로블럼에서 중요한 문제인지. If we just use the rules that particle physicists think are true, having to do with um, quantum mechanics and also special relativity, and putting them together into what is called quantum field theory, if you predict how strong gravity should be you would think it should be extremely strong. But we know that gravity is much weaker than the other fundamental forces. For example, I have a small magnet, I can pick up a paper clip. And so the magnet is competing against the entire Earth whose gravity is very weak, yet the magnet can compete because it's so much stronger. And the hierarchy problem is why should this be true? Why should the force of gravity be so much weaker than the force of electromagnetism? Like I said, it's not just that it bothers us. It seems almost inconsistent. Mm. There's something missing from our theory. So we think of it as a clue to tell us what else there could be in the model of, of the universe. When Raman and I wrote our model, we weren't trying to look at extra dimensions. We were actually started off trying to solve a problem about a theory called supersymmetry, which is another solution to the hierarchy problem. It's a different solution. And there are some puzzling aspects of it. A lot of people believed it was correct, but there were some aspects that just didn't agree with experiment uh, for most models. So we were trying to find a clever way to address those problems. And while we were trying to do that, uh, we worked out this theory with an extra dimension because it seemed that it could help to solve the, this other problem because you could separate out particles along another dimension. You know, we joked that we were probably the only people that could do this because it was just a, a number of things. It involved a number of problems that we had worked on before, but in very different contexts. But when we found something interesting, we could recognize it and we knew how to work it out. So. But it was in some sense an accident. 그러면 지금 교수님께서 이제 랜들 선드론 모델이 실험적으로 증명되기 위해서 좀 필요한 게 어떤 게 있는지도 여쭙고 싶거든요. So one thing that would be the best test is to look at high energies and find particles associated with the extra dimension. In fact, to tell you the truth, they have looked for those particles. They haven't yet found them. It doesn't necessarily mean the model is wrong, but it could be a different version of the model. And maybe the particles are a little bit heavier, so we would like to see a higher energies where they can look for those particles, and then we can maybe discover it. But um, it's hard. <laughs> it's very hard to find. But there are definite experimental um, things that could tell us that the theory is right. And if we don't see them, then we might think the theory is wrong. But one thing I like about doing this kind of physics is there are indeed ways to test it. There are other ways to test it as well, but that's the most direct. 지금 말씀해 주신 여러 개념들이 사실 일반 대중들이 생각했을 때 일상생활에서 와닿기에는 조금 어려운 개념이라는 생각이 드는데 그럼에도 불구하고 교수님께서는 계속 여러 권의 책도 쓰시고 하시면서 대중과 소통하려는 노력을 계속 해 오시잖아요. 혹시 이 이유가 뭔지 여쭤도 될까요? It's a very good question. Um, there's several reasons that I wanted to write these books. I mean, many of the books that were written, I didn't feel like they were books I would read, and I wanted to write to people, write kind of book that I would have wanted to read. And I like books that really try to explain things so that you can follow the ideas. It might be more difficult sometimes, but sometimes it's nice to be able to have a sense of why we're doing what we're doing. That science wasn't magic. 
we really do test the ideas. It's not just based on beautiful ideas or that we like them, but that it's based on measurements and experiments and that there are things we're trying to solve and there, there are ways we try to test those ideas. So, so from a physics point of view, I wanted to get those things across to people. Um, I also wanted to write slightly differently with different types of analogies. Um, for me personally, I had done physics a long time and it was nice to reach a broader audience. It's not that I think people have to read these books, but I do think there's many people who are interested. And if they are interested, they should have the opportunity to be able to learn more about it. 자, 저도 사실 이번 인터뷰 계기로 교수님 책을 그 천국의 문을 두드리며를 읽었는데 말씀하신 딱그 기회를 얻게 된것 같아요. 뭔가 그런 개념에 대한 이해를 하고 좀더 배울 수 있는 기회를 얻게 된것 같아서 너무 좋더라고요. I appreciate that. And the other thing I really did want to get across in that particular book was how science develops. I think that there's so much confusion um, and there's all these debates, especially in America, where some people don't believe science. And so I want to explain how it is that we figure things out. And I wanted people to be more comfortable with the idea that we don't know all the answers right away. We know some of the answers and we build on them to try to come up with more complete theories. I think there are several important aspects. Um, one that I found has been critical to the discoveries I've made is to be able to think deeply about the assumptions that underlie what you think. A lot of the time things seem obvious, but they're obvious because you've only thought about them that way. And sometimes it's useful to think about what else have I assumed in order to make, to decide this is what's happening. For example, even with extra dimensions, um, you would say, well, it's obvious there are three dimensions, but then you study it more and you realize, well, maybe there could be other dimensions that are hidden and we just would not have seen them. So that we don't know that they don't exist. And so sometimes it's useful to think, what is the broad range of possibilities? What's, what some obvious things could be telling us when we see it, when we observe things. And also, I think it really helps to believe that things should be consistent. So if you have things that don't make sense at the same time, it means you're missing something. And whether you know what it is or not, it's out there. And so to think really hard about what it could be that's connecting the different pieces. And of course also to accept it when something doesn't work. I mean, you can have a great idea, but if it doesn't agree with what is out there in reality, it's not describing the universe. And to accept that, and sometimes you can modify things and figure out how to modify it. And sometimes you just have to give it up and move on. And that's not always easy. But what I have found over many years of doing physics is a lot of the time even things that you've abandoned come back. They're sometimes useful in the future for maybe another problem. Right now, I'm thinking about several different problems. Uh, one thing I would really like to understand better is cosmology, how the universe has evolved. And in particular, if this model is right and there is this warped extra dimension, how do we go from having this extra dimension of space to having a universe where we don't observe it anymore? How does that phase transition happen? How do we evolve over time? And is there any way we would know about it? Um, maybe even because of gravitational waves. So that's what I would like to understand better. 저희가 이 인싸랑 코너에서 공통적으로 묻는 질문이 있어요. 10년 뒤 자신에게 한 마디를 하는 건데 지금 교수님 말씀을 듣다 보니까 10년 뒤면은 정말 이 모델이 실험적으로 검증이 됐을 수도 있다는 생각이 들거든요. 그래서 10년 뒤 자신에게 한 마디를 해주신다면 어떤 말씀을 해주실 수 있을까요? That is a very difficult question. Um, I do think. I would like to understand better um, the role of extra dimensions, for one thing. I would like to understand better what explains this positive energy density we see in the universe, if there's any better understanding. What is dark matter? What is it made of? The matter that we don't observe, yet we know is there because of its gravitational influence. So I would like to understand better what's out there underlying what we see. And I guess I also would like to understand, are there any changes to the theoretical rules 
Is there a way quantum mechanics enters that we haven't yet understood? So there's a lot of questions remaining. Mm. I guess what I like is um, science is an exciting way to explore the world. Actually think about science and think about deep ideas. Uh, ideas that you can think about the next day going forward. And, and I guess another thing is that um, sometimes I think people are discouraged because they think they didn't study science when they were younger. Um, you can still be interested in things even if you don't do them yourself. You know, I, I said, like, I like listening to music even though I'm not a musician. And I think it, it's very good for people to appreciate science even when they're not scientists. So thank you for doing this. <laughs>